So you're wondering what the cost of living in Tampa, Florida is. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you the five categories that are most likely to have the biggest impact on your budget, just like they do ours. I'm also gonna share with you my favorite tools and resources that we personally use before making the decision and our clients love to use before making the final decision to call Tampa Bay their home. And if we've never met before, my name is Juan Alcala and I make videos that are all things Tampa Bay. What it's like to live here, what it's like to work here, what it's like to play here, the food, the dining, the outdoors, the beaches, and the sunshine. I'm also a licensed real estate agent and a team leader here with the True Living Group where we help people just like you buy, sell, relocate, and invest here in the greater Tampa Bay area. So the first thing I want to do is share one of my all-time favorite tools when it comes to sizing up the cost of living anywhere in the country, and that is a website called bestplaces.net. This website is awesome. You can go in there, type in whatever city you're considering moving to, and it'll give you a general overview of what it should cost and what it looks like to live in that city. It covers all the major categories. There are reviews from, um, from residents. There's all kinds of things on this website that I think you're absolutely gonna love, so make sure you check that out. Now, the five categories that we're gonna be talking about today are going to be groceries, housing, utilities, healthcare, and transportation, because those are five of the largest categories that really make an impact on your budget. Let's get right into this list. So when it comes to stock in that fridge, there are a lot of options here. And, and I want to start by saying this. I realize that some of you are um, you know, really, really frugal when it comes to food. You don't spend any extra money regardless of quality, and that is okay. There are other people who really want the highest quality food going in their body, and they are willing to sacrifice elsewhere in order to you know, get those quality groceries. So what I wanna just share with you is like, I'm going to share my personal budget, our household budget here, and for some of you, it might mortify you. For others, it you may laugh that it, you spend way more than that and that's okay. We as a family have made a decision that that is something that we like to invest in. We cut elsewhere. Okay, so as an example, I bought one pair of jeans last year. That's it, y'all, <laughs> right? And you know, my, my wife buys clothes, you know, I, it, we're experienced people. So we, you know, we'll cut elsewhere to go out and make sure we can go have a great dinner somewhere if that's what we need to do. I'm just sharing that with you. So when we get into some of these numbers, you can just have perspective. Everybody's got a different approach, but we're gonna share our personal budget. So I just wanted to give that one caveat. Now you've got great grocers in the state. We've got Publix, which which is awesome, y'all. Like they'll literally bag your groceries and take them to the car. It's a great level of service. And I would not consider them an expensive grocer. I know other people do. You know, of course we have Walmart, we've got Winn-Dixie, We've got Sprouts, which is a competitor of Whole Foods. We have uh, Trader Joe's. We have Whole Foods here as well. And when it comes to the big warehouses, we've got things like Costco. We're a Costco family. We love shopping there. There are Sam's Clubs as well. And then we also have BJ's in the area. So these are things that you can take, you know, and, and pick and choose from in terms of how you're trying to stock that fridge. We personally, I did the numbers. We're coming into tax season here. My wife keeps a great budget. We were spending roughly about $1,500 a month on groceries you know, on average. Now, how big is my household? That's what you're probably gonna wanna know. So um, it's me and my wife, and then we have three children. My oldest is 11, he's a boy. Um, I'm pretty sure I need to put a chain around the refrigerator. That's how much he eats right now. Um, we have a nine-year-old daughter and a five-year-old daughter. So, you know, your family may not be that large. And you may not, you know, again, you may not be spending a ton of money on groceries. You might be able to do it for five or $600. I know that there are single people who live in the area here who absolutely can. Um, again, keep that in perspective. And according to Best Places, Tampa comes in at 105, meaning that our groceries are relatively five points higher than the national average. I would say that that's probably accurate. We moved from Metro Detroit a little over five years ago. When we came down here, we felt like our grocery bill jumped almost 15%, but we may have been paying less than the average. So I just wanted to share that with you. Next on our list is housing, where Best Places ranks us at 96.5, essentially three and a half points lower than the national average. Now, I sell real estate, and what I'm seeing here in the market is we are actually a little bit higher than the national average currently, but this is literally a give and take from month to month. Right now, the median sales price in the United States is $403,000 for a home, and the median sales price here in the greater Tampa Bay area is $417,000, so it's pretty close. Now, here's what I wanna say about this. When you take that versus the national average, 
you know, and, and you really take a step back and go, okay, what are you getting for that? Well, we're, we live on the coast. This is a coastal region. There are very few places in the country where you can get close to the national average in housing prices near the water. And if you live near a lake, you know this to be true. If you live near a river that is um, you know, a, a focal point of your, your local area, you know that to be true as well. So to be able to get really, really close to the median sales price here in the United States, that is a steal in my book. And this is something that I have been talking about since we moved down here. It was a huge part of why we made the decision to call Tampa home. When we moved here in 2018, we moved December of 2018, and I thought that Tampa was literally discounted. It was a steal from a real estate perspective. Well, since then, we had a global event where people were allowed to work from home, more work from home jobs than ever before, and people discovered Tampa and they started to move here in droves. As, as a matter of fact, they moved to the state. Over 300,000 people have moved to the state of Florida for three straight years. That is an incredible number. So when it comes to housing, we're a little bit higher than that, but I wanna get into some of the specific categories because we get a lot of questions regarding housing. I wanna talk about that. What does $417,000 get you? Well, that's essentially a three bedroom, two bath, right around 1,500 square foot home in the greater Tampa Bay area. You can spend 15, 20 million dollars in the area. There's a 21 million dollar listing currently. And you can also get condos for as low as $180,000. They're going to need all the work, just so you know. But it is possible. So keep those things in perspective. Taxes, um, in the greater Tampa Bay area, what I see on average is right about 1.3% of the purchase price of the home. So as an example, um, if you bought a $500,000 house, if you multiply that um, times 1.3, that would give you your tax number, what you're going to pay for your annual taxes. If you live in a community with an HOA or a CDD fee, they're gonna add that on top of your taxes, so keep that in perspective as well. Insurance, which has been a huge hot topic, um, and for good reason, depending on what area you live in, insurance can be outrageous. And some areas right on the water, um, you know, on the Gulf of Mexico, some of those homes are actually uninsurable. But it's not all like that. And that's the thing I wanna, wanna share with people because this is one of the biggest questions we get asked. I live 1.9 miles away from the Gulf of Mexico. Very, very close, guys. Very close. We have a four bedroom, two bath, 2,100 square foot home with a pool. Um, we're in a non-flood zone, which is important to recognize. We're in a non-evacuation zone, which is also important to recognize. And my annual homeowner's insurance is $2,500 a year. To me, that is not a large expense considering what I get in return for that, right? Very few places can you be in the Gulf of Mexico in less than seven minutes, and that's where I live. I'll make that exchange every day of the week. Some of you are going $2,500, that's crazy, but you know we see clients that, that get insurance quotes from eight and $10,000 when they're in flood zones, when they're right by the beach. So keep it in perspective, the more further inland you move, when you're not in a flood zone or not on a hurricane evacuation zone, your insurance costs will lower. If you buy a new home, the cost of ownership on a new home is significantly lower, right? You get a 10-year structural warranty on all those properties that's required by law by the way um, they all give you like a one year bumper to bumper if you will and then a lot of them offer like a two year if there's anything happens with the plumbing and for the most part you're most likely not going to have to replace the roof the air conditioning the mechanicals or the electrical in at least a decade so the cost of ownership is significantly lower now I wanna share another one of those resources that my clients love, and I love this resource too. It's the Forbes Cost of Living Calculator. I'm gonna take you in on this right now. What this allows you to do is put in the salary you are currently making, where you live, and compare that to the area you wanna to move to. So in our example, we're gonna say, you're moving from Boston, Massachusetts to Tampa, Florida. You make $75,000 a year, you hit calculate, and what it shows you is that you need to make 49,526 here in Tampa. The cost of living in Tampa is approximately 51% lower than it is in Boston, Massachusetts. This is fantastic. Um, so if you're moving from areas like San uh, San Diego, which is, uh, we get a lot of clients relocating from that area to Tampa. Let's say you make like 200 grand a year, which a lot of our clients do that, that are making that move from San Diego. Well, when you move to Tampa, you only need to make 100, 
you know, $37,000 to have the same lifestyle. The other thing that this tool does really well, as you come down, it'll actually show you the categories and like how you're positioned versus this area. And this is why, like when I was talking about affordability earlier and like how, why Tampa is extremely attractive from a coastal perspective, if you live in an area like San Diego, which is a beautiful part of the country, make no mistake y'all, but like when the median home price there is a million dollars and you know, a lot of people may have paid off half their mortgage and they can take the $500,000 net proceeds they take and pay cash for a home here in the area. That's why um, so many people have, have really started to move to the, to the greater Tampa Bay area here. It also shows you things like rent, so you can keep that in perspective, your energy, phone. This is a great tool. I love sharing this with my clients. Again, this is the Forbes cost of living calculator. Make sure you use it. It's a great resource. You're gonna to have to make a determination whether you're a beach baby or whether you wanna invest you know, further out in the burbs because that's where they're building new houses. But obviously there's a lot of room in between. If you have more questions about that, y'all don't hesitate to reach out. All of my contact information is down below. Heck, we even put a link to our calendar down there so you can schedule a time that's most convenient for you. But let's get rolling in the next category. Now, when it comes to utilities, I know a lot of America is experiencing the same thing. We've all seen incredible inflation over the last three years, and utilities seem to be the one who not giving it back to anybody. <laughs> um, and I was just reading an article yesterday that said in the state of North Carolina, one of the utility companies is asking for an over 40% increase. Y'all, 40%. Oh my word. Can you imagine opening that bill? Oh my Lord. I would be shocked. Now, according to best places here, it's saying that Tampa, we rank at 101.5. So we're essentially 1.5% higher than the national average. Our bill has gone up. Last year when I did this video, I shared with you guys, we were paying about $250 on average. That went up to about 375. Um, and my wife told me I was a little bit low on last year too. So forgive me, that was uh, 285 is what that number sh should have been. I did the math month by month before I got on today, but we're roughly at $375 a month. Now, sharing perspective again, we're a four bedroom, two bath with a pool. That pool pump runs all day. We have giant air conditioners here, they run all day. My home does not have all new windows. We have some new windows and some old windows. We're in the process of fixing that and we've got great insulation upstairs. The house was built in 1977 though, so it's not the most efficient thing in the world. Our clients who are buying new construction homes, um, they are typically about 500 square foot bigger than we are on average and they're spending just a little bit less money sometimes, right? So I just wanted to share that with you. You know, you gotta keep things in perspective. If you have a thousand square foot condo, you know, and you're sandwiched in between other properties, your utility bills are gonna be pretty low for the most part. But if you're, you know, an end unit with all the windows, um, you know, right on the Gulf Coast of Mexico and the sun's beating down on you every day, your utility bills are probably gonna be a little bit higher. Um, or if you have a four bedroom, three bath, and it's 2,800 square feet. So just keep that in perspective. When it comes to utilities, that's part of the deal. We pay for trash. Um, our trash bill is uh, right around $35 a month. If you live in a city that is included with your taxes, we live in unincorporated penalty. County, so we have to cover that on our own. Our water bill is roughly $120 a month. I did the math on that too. And then cable and internet, I have Frontier, which is fiber. It's some of the best internet ever. Um, the internet fee is like 60 bucks and then you throw the taxes onto that. Um, and it's a, a gigabit up and a gigabit down, which is super fast. I know I'm nerding out, but like that's crazy fast, right? It allows me to stream to you guys. Um, that's roughly 60 bucks and then you throw the taxes on top of it and then we rent their equipment. So we've got like three Wi-Fi expander. So our bill is $90 a month. We don't have cable. Um, we pay for YouTube TV. Um, we don't use it all the time. We only use it during football season. So I think that's expensive. It's like 70 bucks a month, but that's the same price all around the country. So figured we'd share that with you as well. Next on our list coming in at 113 on the best place index here is transportation. You know, I only have perspective where we moved from. We moved from Metro Detroit, um, you know, cars cost what they cost. You know, we had a bunch of dealers out there. Um, the one thing I will say is this, we had to buy our first car here in Florida this year. The experience was entirely different than I was used to in Detroit, but we were spoiled rotten. Most people don't have a dealership on every corner essentially <laughs> like we did up there. It's the Motor City, y'all. When it comes to Florida, it's gonna be a little bit different. So I wanted to share that with you. And cars, as everyone's seen with inflation, has just been outrageous. It hurt my heart to have to turn in our lease 
piece um, are for the same vehicle the price doubled literally the, the payment double I should say so you know we had to make some tough decisions you know decide what we were going to do in terms of automobiles um, and then and then move forward with that so that's the experience we've had there so cars are what they cost that here's what I'll say though um, our roads in Michigan were so bad. The potholes would literally swallow the front end of your car. You know, it wasn't anything to get a, a flat tire during the winter or, you know, to have to get your front end on the on the vehicle realigned or new ball joints or sway bar inlet, whatever it is, all the stuff up front. Usually every three to four years, you would have to do something on a car that you own. So the cost of transportation for us as a family has went down. Since we moved here five years ago, we brought our uh, 2013 Volkswagen Passat. I have literally put no money in that car and we give it service by the dealership. So it's not like we're ignoring things. It is due for tires, but they've got like 80,000 miles on it or something like that. But like we haven't had to do any of the things that we we're doing before. So I'm sharing that with you now. Um, if you don't drive, what are your options? Well, we've got buses here in the area. Those aren't free, but you can get a, a monthly pass. There are tolls. Um, I put 20 bucks on our um, Sun Pass twice a year, 40 bucks. And I'm a real estate agent, y'all. I drive everywhere. So that's not expensive here. Um, you may <laughs> may never even need to get a Sun Pass. You, you know, we, sometimes, depending on where you live in the greater Tampa Bay area, um, toll roads aren't necessarily common. So just keep that in perspective. There are a few, but they're few and far between. So just keep that um, in mind. The Sun Runner, which is down in St. Pete, that's a nominal cost as well. Um, we do have the rail car in uh, downtown Tampa. That's free. I mean, transportation is fair when it comes to Uber and Lyft. You know, I've seen the increases on that. But again, if you travel, you know that those are relative. So uh, meaning that it costs roughly the same here in Tampa as it does in Dallas, unless you, you know, you get some kind of peak time at an event or something like that, which they always give you those peak prices anyways. But when it comes to transportation, it says 113. My experience has been dif different, but yours may be in aligned with that. Now our fifth category that we're gonna be covering today is healthcare. And according to Best Places, it's got us coming in at 101.6. Now, I've read a bunch of different things here and what I've seen is that Tampa and Florida in general, our healthcare cost is lower. Now, again, I take that with a grain of salt. The index is telling us we're higher. Um, here's why I'm sharing this with you because we get a lot of professionals that are in the healthcare industry that relocate to Tampa. And one of the things that um, I commonly hear from them is that Florida pays less for healthcare providers. And I, I would agree based upon what I'm getting feedback from my clients. Now, again, I'm not in that industry, but every single person that I have spoke to that is applying for jobs or has made that transition says that they make less money here. But the cost of living of where they're moving from typically makes the offset worth it. So I want to share that with you. So um, again, you're gonna to need to do your homework on this. But here's what I have found. Um, our emergency room visits, well, we haven't had any, but our urgent care visits are exactly the same as what I was paying when we lived in Michigan five years ago. So like everything has gone up in five years, but I'm still paying the same thing now that I was five years ago. It tells me that, that healthcare costs less, at least the urgent care type. Um, our medications, I don't see anything absorbent on that. We pay cash for a lot of things. I am a self-employed person, so we have a very nominal health, uh, coverage when it comes to healthcare. So just share, I'll share that with you too. And I'm gonna take you to the Florida Blue website where you know if you're interested in Blue Cross Blue Shield and you had to buy your own insurance, you can actually see what these things cost because for us you know when I ran my first quote here it was an $1,800 a month expense for our family of five um, you can spend much more which you'll see in a moment but I just wanted to share that with you now in terms of like who are the healthcare providers in the area because that's a question that we often get asked as well you know we've got great hospitals there's Tampa General Hospital downtown um, we've got Advent Healthcare Systems HV, uh, HVA which is another big healthcare system. We've got Baycare Health System, which is another um, huge healthcare system. We've got John Hopkins uh, Hospital, um, the, the All Children's there, incredible hospital there. Um, Orlando Health is actually moving into the area as well. And the big one is Moffitt Cancer Center. Uh, Moffitt is um, investing heavily in Tampa. They're in the process of building like a 700 acre cancer research facility up in Angeline, which is just absolutely beautiful. That community is starting to grow. That's a 
in Pasco County. Um, so I just wanted to give you some perspective on that because when it comes to healthcare, everybody's got different needs. You know, if, if you require a lot of medication, a lot of specialized doctors, you know, make sure you're doing a ton of homework before you make that leap. If you tend to lean on the healthy side, you know, we basically do well visits and that's about it. Thank the Lord. You know, we've been blessed in that respect. You know, things may change for us in the future, but you know, you just got to keep these things in, in, in perspective. And like I was telling you before, like I want to show you this on, on the Florida Blue website. Come check this out. So what I did is I went over to floridablue.com and asked for a quote. And then in there I put that we're a family of five and we live in Pinellas County because that's where we live. And then I asked it to run a quote. So it gave me the numbers here and you can see the My Blue X bronze plan it comes in at $1,749.61 a month. And that's still with a maximum out-of-pocket of, of $19,000 potentially if something was to happen. That's a pretty large expense for most people. And if you come all the way to the bottom and get the lowest out-of-pocket, all of a sudden that becomes $5,368 a month, which is insane. And then that will make your out-of-pocket for the entire family no more than $4,000. So as you can see, healthcare you know, in the country I know is super expensive. Again, I don't have perspective on where you live. What I would do is, you know, run a quote. If you have to buy your own insurance, that's the best way to do it. If you have an employer, they're making contributions. That's entirely different. But I wanted to share that with you so you can just kind of wrap your mind around some of these numbers. In our urgent care visits, when I went and looked at the actual expense there, we were paying about $120 per visit. So hopefully that helps. And I, I know there's a lot of information to take in here. And I wanted to throw in one bonus. So I went to our audience and polled them and asked, what are you spending for childcare? I asked our past clients and they all said roughly the same thing, which is somewhere between 700 and $1,000 per month per child is what they were expending on childcare, which is a pretty big number. Now, I hope you got a tremendous amount of value out of today's video. If you know someone considering relocating the area, please feel free to share this video with them. If you are considering making the move, all of our contact information is listed down below. Me and my team would love to help you make that transition. Again, there's even a link to my calendar. I'm gonna leave two videos right here that YouTube thinks you should binge out on. And until next time, go out and live that Tampa life.